Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. We shifted over to where the magic happens. It's food time with the Comelonas. Food time. Welcome to this great set, right? Do you like this? Yeah, you know, I, I love it. You know, you did it for yourself. <laughs> I have to say something. Before we continue this segment, I am mic'd all the way up, and I've always wanted to do this. So the winds are going to come in from the northwest here. <laughs> to the, okay, I'm done. All okay. right. <laughs> so let's get back to what we're doing here. Um, right. Can you tell me what we have here sure. laid out? So um, we decided to bring in some ingredients that are very common in um, Latino households, not just Latino, but Caribbean, uh, Central American households. Mm -hmm. um, so we have kale over here, which is amazing for protein. Uh, kale is, actually I had to learn how to eat it because I hated it, <laughs> but it's all about how you mix it up. Uh, so usually what we do is put like cilantro with it, a little bit of um, cabbage, chop it up, mm -hmm. and you dress it with whatever dressing you want. You can, you know, make your own dressings with like raspberries, blueberries, like whatever you need. Um, the radishes right here I brought because who does not love tacos? Like you love mm -hmm. tacos, right? Yes. I can't trust you if you do not like tacos. True, <laughs> but true. Um, <laughs> these reminded me of a remedy my grandma used to make for me in order to take away my asthma. Um, I have really chronic, chronic asthma. So she used to chop these bad boys up and she used to mix it with a little bit of this miracle plant right here called aloe vera. Mm -hmm. um, la savila. Sí, la savila. Sí. <laughs> and so um, that plant is very medicinal. So she used to mix this, that, uh, lime, and a little bit of honey. And mm -hmm. my wheezing stopped. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. my wheezing stopped. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, and um, she was also going to talk a little bit about the savila. Sí, la savila, aloe vera. So me growing up, like, as a cook, my mom would put me to cook. We would get cuts. So we would get cuts, burns. We put a little bit of aloe vera on there, and within maybe a couple of days, it's like it never happened. And like no scarring either. No <laughs> scars. No scars. And so how exactly can you can you can you grab it for me and just show me sort yeah. of like how do you extract what? Oh, very easy. What you need from it, right? The the, the medicinal qualities of it. Yes. Um, and actually, the cacara, like the, wow, I forget English sometimes. <laughs> uh, the shell of the aloe vera is actually very medicinal. A lot of fruits have medicinal properties on their shell, on their peels mm -hmm. that we usually throw out. Like the inside of a banana, it's good to clean your teeth, it's good to whiten your teeth. Okay. Um, this right here, um, you can boil it and make a tea out of it, and it helps with like detoxing. But usually, how we would cut it is, well, how I learned. You, you can see. let me know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but right here, we would cut the ends, like the thorny parts. Okay. And then after that, just slide the skin right off with a knife, mm -hmm. nice and thin. And it's like really slimy inside. Um, but that slime is what holds all the goods. Okay, so then you, you <coughs> cut the sides here and then you put it to, to boil? To, to Like how do you, how do you, because I have no <laughs> reference idea. point to this. I've seen it at the supermarket, I know what it is, but I'm just uh, like, I don't even know how anybody messes with it. The best way to do it is as, as yeah. raw as possible. As raw as possible. As raw as possible, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can put it in, in smoothies, it's also edible. You can actually consume it as well. So then you have a cut or something and then you just sort of kind of like... You and slide it right off with the knife, like close it. to the skin. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that what you're doing? No. Am I doing it right? No, you need to do it right. <laughs> but um, yeah, you do it like that take off the thorns, right. slide it through with the knife. Um, and yeah, like she said, raw foods, like, for example, we eat onions and almost everything. Mm -hmm. We don't notice that, but we do. And usually, there's a fly here. Uh, oh, hey, <laughs> usually, I have my papers. I can just like. Do it, do give it to him. <laughs> so uh, usually what's best is for you to eat like raw foods so right. that you can get all the vitamins. Uh, when you cook something, it's still good for you. It's just, you're diminishing a lot of its values, like sure. the additional properties yeah. because the heat is killing it off, right. you know? Um, so for this, for example, like like she said, you could put it in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. um, it has a bitter taste, but you can like sweeten it with like some agave. So I brought some agave mm -hmm. here, or you can sweeten it with some stevia. Um, so these are two uh, great sweeteners that you can substitute sugar. Instead of sugar, you just use these two. Right. Uh, stevia goes a long way, it's like two drops, and it's like super sweet. Okay. Uh, agave is pretty good. Um, and, and could you tell me about what is this right here next this. to you? This little lady. This right here. Oh, do you guys like my muñeca sin cara? Is she like <laughs> the, uh, is she, uh, your mascot or, or, yeah. or is it? Is she gonna be making appearances at your? She should. Uh, right. She should. You make guys should like definitely bring her along. Right. Mm -hmm. Did right. I just give you that idea? Yes, you did. Awesome. Thank you. That's what's Minelva, up. you heard that? <laughs> Minelva, you heard that? So this is. Uh, I don't know if you can get a good look of it, but it's a moringa powder. Uh, moringa powder. Moringa powder. Moringa powder. You want to smell it? M O R I N G A. Am I spelling it right? Yeah. Okay, nice. You smell it? It's very nice. It smells like matcha, right? Mm-hmm. So I had no idea what this was until. Uh, 
I met Baba Rasan. He's uh, my medicinal guru. He's from Sundial Herbal Products in the Bronx. Shout out to you. And um, yeah, he's an amazing healer. Um, he actually put me onto this uh, when I was on a field trip with a few kids from my last job. And mm -hmm. this is amazing. Uh, this heals, like if you're sick, you just put a little bit of that in your tea. Um, in your set, like literally. Right. Um, even when you're like menstruating, you have a lot of cramps. I mean, I don't. Um, no, not you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> women. You know, women. Yeah. So how do you how do you uh, how do you prepare this? I, so wait, you're saying that I can just make myself a, a tea, cup yep. of tea, and just sort of sprinkle it on. That's it. And what other ways can I can I use this? So um, you can use that um, even in. For example, a smoothies. You can put okay. a banana in there, so put it in a smoothie. Like, just sprinkle it on. Mm -hmm. Same okay. way you would use like matcha, right. like green tea matcha. Right. Same way with that. Where can um, I find this? That, they have it in specific, <sighs> the Jamaican spots, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The Jamaican spots, they have moringa powder, um, sundial or herbal products on Boston Road. Um, they, I got that from there. I always get my herbs from there. That, okay. blue vervain, mm -hmm. different herbs. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Now, um, online as well. I'm trying to like, you know, we're having this conversation, but I'm trying to pretend that I don't smell these uh, madudos over here <laughs> and these pupusas. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about these? Because I know that they don't have inside what I assume they have inside, which is like meat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And apparently they're not. Mm -mm. There's no meat in here. So, what exactly do we have in these pupusas? So, what's in there is vegan mozzarella cheese, mm -hmm. uh, refried beans, and uh, we put a little bit of the Beyond, beyond yeah, Meat. So we use some Beyond Meat for uh, the meat substitute. Okay. Um, so we use that for this just to make it taste as authentic as a pupusa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but however, uh, we use a lot of uh, vegetables to taste like meat. Mm -hmm. right. Because if you think about it, if you just see um, cooked meat without any seasoning, without any vegetables, without any herbs, it's not going to taste like anything. Right. It's probably going to make you a little nauseous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what makes meat taste good is you know, sort these, of what's, what's these around spices, it. yeah. Right. Very so, sure. so you guys are, are you? So you're fans of Beyond Meat. You guys. Yeah, we. Do you, we do you eat that, or do you feel like that's something that you don't want to eat as much of because you just want to stick with the plants and vegetables, or is it a good substitute for you guys to have? Yes or no. We try to stay away from from the Beyond Meat. Like mm -hmm. she said, she's actually created meat with nuts, actually. Yeah, cauliflower. Really? cauliflower yeah. Flowers. So it's a. Uh, oh, tell me about that. Uh, cauliflower uh, crumbles, so it looks mm -hmm. just like ground meat, but mm -hmm. what I do is uh, I chop it up, like really, really fine, and then I season it like if it was ground meat, you know, like uh, like tacos or something. Okay. And then um, I use traditional sauces that we use like in, the, in my household, like naranja agria, um, sour mm -hmm. orange, it mm -hmm. gives amazing flavor, really shows off the, the flavors um, and anything you put it in. Um, I use oregano, um, onion. Mm -hmm. I use this pilon to make to mash everything up um, because I feel like that opens up the flavors a little bit more. Right. Also, if you're like dealing with, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, I put cilantro in almost all my meat, my fake meat. Mm -hmm. So smell that. You don't smell it much, right? Mm. You don't yeah. smell it too no. much. It's, not, it's, right? it's very subtle. Smell that. There it is. There it is. There's the magic. Right? <laughs> oh yes. Wow. You know? It's yeah. never worked for me. No? I've done that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's what I do. I like really connect with the food. We really connect with the food when we cook. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so. So you guys, okay, so I'm assuming that because of your of the way that you cook and, and the, the recipes you make, that most of your protein is coming from plants. It's yes. coming from the seasonings that you guys make. Definitely. Most of our food is plant-based um, right. that we make. Um, we do do some vegetarian dishes. Um, we like being flexible. We know a lot of people are still being introduced to that idea. Like, they can't even fathom it. Mm -hmm. Like, when I started eating plant-based for a long time, um, in the beginning, my grandma was like, in Spanish, <laughs> but like, what are you going to eat? And I'm just like, the same exact thing that we eat without the meat, right. you know? Right. Um, because if you take a traditional plate and it's like rice, peas, and chicken and maduros, you're still going to have beans, um, maduros, and, and beans, you know? And, and, and all yeah, sure. You know? Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that sort of uh, is a Right. Meatless dish that exactly. everybody can sort of just, you know, partake in and stuff. So you guys have your pop-ups, yeah. right? So how many pop-ups have you had so far? So this would be uh, our actual first pop-up mm. event. Okay. Um, so it's actually being hosted uh, with uh, Tribe Co-Create. They're opening the space for us. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to them. They're actually a... a cooperative. A cooperative. Uh, so they're a co-op, okay. They're a co-op, okay. yep. And um, it's a three uh, women of color, amazing women who 
open up their space mm -hmm. and um, we're going to be hosting our first actual event but we have catered before in the past um, for different events and so yeah this is going to be our first of many do you guys cater just here in the bronx or would you go out to the other boroughs we will go out to the other boroughs okay. yeah okay we'll go out. and so uh do you guys have a curated menu for the pop-up that you that you're gonna we do or do you know exactly what you're gonna yes what are you gonna have so we have um an appetizer um so we named it gotham nachos mm -hmm. um and it's the beef crumbles the infamous uh, uh cauliflower, cauliflower meat cauliflower, sure yeah with some uh cheese and uh, we're also gonna have uh, beans on it, some pickled cabbage, pickled okay. onions. Um, so kind of like similar to this without the liquid. Oh, this is um, so we love probiotics, like anything that's like, you know, pickled, like fermented, mm -hmm. is really good for your digestive, your digestive tract. Right. Uh, so we're gonna have some of that on top of it. Um, we're gonna can, have. You know, uh, yeah. can you tell me a little bit about pickling? Because yeah. uh, how long does the process of pickling take? Like, what do you? Is it, it days, is it weeks, or the longer you go, the, the better it is for you, mm -hmm. or is it like definitely a, a set time? Um, I would say it depends what you want to do. Okay. For example, like that, like uh, cortillo, you could do like one to two weeks, right? Right. You don't want to overdo it either because then it'll be way too acidic. Sure. Um, it won't taste as good. It'll probably be good for you, but mm -hmm. it's not going to taste as good. Um, then kombucha, for mm -hmm. example, like I ferment my own kombucha. You get the scoby, really? yeah. Oh wow! So the the scoby, it's like a little. It looks like a like a little stingray. Okay. So you get it online. You get a piece of it, and whatever uh, jar size jar you put it in, it grows to that size. Okay. So you'll get a jar like this big, and it'll grow that big. Oh, that's it's, amazing. It's, it's incredible. It's really fascinating. That's very cool. Um, so and the scoby would be like um, two weeks exact True, if you do it okay. more than that it can turn into beer which is hey fun hey, but, what's wrong with that, man? you know <laughs> it depends what you want um so you guys have your uh social media up and running yes um do you guys what is it that you guys put up there that you think is going to sell or market your brand um the correct way right because you guys you guys do catering so oh actually you know what i want to ask you with the catering do you have your set menu as well or do you go Preference. 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 Yeah. Okay, Preference. there you go. Right. Yeah, because okay. everybody has different, uh, you know, uh, different dietary needs sure. or like sure. just even themes, you know, maybe like a taco right. night, Mexican night or, you know. Okay. So it depends on that. So it's basically uh, client by client. Client by client. You guys client. decide what you do. And so, so because it's client by client, do you put that up in your social? Do you guys make sure that people on Instagram can see the different types of, of food that you offer? Or yeah. do you sort of want to push one... Uh, message, which is it's, it's all plant-based, it's all greens and healthy. Like, how do you guys manage your socials? So, um, I can I can say a little bit, and then you mm -hmm. can. But um, pretty much, with that, like we want to have different varieties. So, for example, we'll post uh, three different cuisines just to have some diversity on the page. Okay. Um, and again, we are fairly new, which is up and coming, launching. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there'll definitely be more content within the next two weeks, okay. um, as well as other social media platforms. Right now, we're very uh, focused on like the Instagram, um, but we'll be, we'll be having our Facebook um, okay. within the next two weeks. We'll be having um, the Twitter. We already have the Twitter actually. Oh, so you guys are going to be tweeting? Yes, we're going to be tweeting. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah, okay. Tweeting, yes. okay. And actually, like on our Instagram page, we have like holistic food benefits, right? So if you go on our page at Comelonas with a Z, um, it'll show like different herbs and what they're good for. And then mm. like maybe subcon subconsciously you'll think of, hey, Comelonas did post you know, something about like oregano is good for this and right. I am having this type of pain, like let me, you know, use that, you know? So you guys definitely want to have like an informational type of Instagram, yes. not just like put up pretty pictures, yeah. mm -hmm. you guys really want to give people yes. something to, to take from it, yeah. right? Like on your, on your posts. Yeah, and, right? and of course a lot of, a lot of our dishes, we're, we're also going to revamping a lot of them. So a lot of the favorite foods that we grew up with, mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're going to make it plant-based as right. well. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so I feel like that's, that's also a really good uh, use for Twitter as well sort of you link articles or mm -hmm. you yourself make your own posts mm -hmm. where you speak about the benefits of certain foods and, right. and you know things like that so but I, I'm wondering about Twitter because like Twitter is something that I think so many people think of it as an afterthought and they focus just on Instagram right um, but you know for me it's like Instagram is important of course and, mm -hmm. and Facebook, Facebook is, is important Facebook too. is super important yeah, yeah, which is something sure. that I used to not think it was right. but now I totally understand that it is yeah. uh, but it's it's good because if you're gonna be throwing out the information I always think of Twitter as like uh, uh, just like this big board, you know, just mm -hmm. like things that people can yeah. you know look through and, and find information. So that's Definitely. pretty interesting. So when you guys have your your schools, you you guys have actually had classes. You've actually done cooking classes. And yeah. You, you've done well, we've done one class, but we have 
there's more to come. We're just we're yeah. launching. So. so how did that cooking class go? How how was that that class? Did you, did you guys feel like invigorated with your message? Like you were happy that it went as well as I'm assuming it probably did? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, honestly, it all started like we decided youth specifically because mm -hmm. um, it that's the future generation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like um, I used to work at a nonprofit um, in the Bronx. Uh, and so when I was talking about my, my guru, uh, Baba Rasan, like we actually took those kids there. Mm -hmm. um, so that made me comfortable with the idea of like, hey, this is really what we're going to do. Like we really want to, you know, open up the floor for any questions, debunk myth, like, you know, have them challenge themselves to like taste something that they think is nasty, but like right. revamped in a way where it's like, hey, I really like this, you right. know? Right. So that's how it went. Um, a lot of uh, open mindedness there, for sure. Do you guys, uh, how do you guys feel about taking this initiative on? Because I'm assuming it's something that can take a lot of like mental stress on you. And you know, every day you wake up and you think about what you're going to do. And I'm always fascinated by people who go into business for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Kenya, I, I want to know how how it affects you because this is something that's like. 24 7 right you, right. you don't really stop this yeah. right mm -hmm. you even though you might have days where you might be off mm -hmm. no one's really really off right. like how does it affect you to have to always sort of be on in order to make this super successful mm -hmm. so for me going back to my mom when when she would go into these pharmaceutical companies you know it broke my heart seeing her read certain books and she would look at me like these are these are estas son cosas that we 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 used to make like all of the a lot of these holistic healings a lot right. of these medicines right. came from our land yes. so it was just heartbreaking that they're reselling it to us so that's why Comelonas is here to reclaim this so i have to remind myself why i'm doing this mm -hmm. and this is for mi gente for my right. people right so when you have that that when that sticks that to you that goal in mind that's mm -hmm. kind of what makes it easy mm -hmm. and how is it for you because it it having the goal in mind makes it easy but it's still a day to day operation yeah um, are there moments when you're just overwhelmed by even just doing something as simple as posting or being on Instagram or sort of finding out what are the best techniques? Or sometimes you get overwhelmed even by cooking. As much as you guys love it, of course, mm -hmm. there comes a point where everything just becomes too much, right? Yeah. Like, does that happen to you? Do you get overwhelmed sometimes? Um, sometimes it can be a little, it can feel a little overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, especially because we're so, I feel like as a society, a lot of people are like programmed to like compare, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like also yeah. catching yourself like, nope, that's not me. Right. This is our own lane. We're doing this out of our hearts because we care. We want to give back. Right. So like that, keeping that in mind and also just like trying to shift perspectives. I feel like that's something that um, that works wonders. You know, if you look at something like if it's gonna be, you know, hard work and it's just like, oh, it's, you're draining. Mm -hmm. It's draining, I mean. Um, versus you look at something and it's like, wow, I'm self-teaching myself Photoshop, <laughs> you know? Like, right. I am on YouTube University and I'm yeah. just like learning this for myself and it's hard, yeah, and it's intimidating. But at the same time, it's like rewarding because sure. you're gaining these skills while you're, you know, uh, doing your brand and like yeah. getting out there and meeting people. and. So looking at it as like networking opportunities, looking at it as like new open doors, new skills that I'm acquiring, that we're mm -hmm. acquiring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's how I, I That's very true. It's like I, I uh, that's one of the things that uh, I find about doing my own sort of self-marketing or whatever. It's uh, mm -hmm. the food world to me, it's always been a love and a passion of mine. But now that I'm sort of in it and I get to meet people on the other side, mm -hmm. um, as overwhelming as it can be on my end sometimes, I do remind myself. That's the best way to think of it. Yeah. You remind yourself of mm -hmm. remind yourself of all the great people you're meeting, all the connections you're making, all the things you're learning. Yeah. Right? So like if you are on YouTube University and you're learning about your craft and learning right. about how to push yourself, it makes it sort of less intense. And I'd rather be a little overwhelmed than to be not doing anything at all. Mm -hmm. You know, like what what am I doing? Like if yeah. I were to not be doing this, like, you know, eventually we wanna be able to, you know have our own business yeah. like maybe like a brick and mortar or like a truck um this is like an end goal of ours ah yeah. so that's that's one of the goals yes Either that's a one truck of the truck or brick and mortar yes. Yes. beautiful well yes, i wish sure. you guys complete and total luck i mean you guys are gonna you, you guys are gonna be fine thank you i have a feeling <laughs> you guys are gonna be just fine thank you so i wish you mu uh, much success and thank you guys for showing on of course thank you, thank you for showing, having us showing up on the show i really appreciate it and thank you for this because this is mine i'm assuming <laughs> this is yours right? uh, also my doodles for me we got something for you. Oh, there's more? Oh, Wait, there's that more. that logo, that's right. <laughs> so this is there for you. Oh, that's beautiful. You know? Oh, that's definitely Now you're a comelon. 
That's right. Yeah, I can just like knock the other letters out. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I love this. Thank you guys. You're very welcome. This is really cool. And enjoy that. Thank you guys um, so much. So I really appreciate partido. it. All right, guys, stay connected with Comelonas on Instagram, Comelonas. And well, that's all for the show. Thank you again for tuning in, and thank you to our guests today for joining us. I will be enjoying this right now. Tune in every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. here on Bronx at Optimum 67 and Fios 33. Also tune in on the go at bronxnet.org and find us on YouTube. From Bronx to the world, this is Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. Remember to feed your mind, feed your body, and if you see me coming along, feed me. Adios. Let's feast. Vamos a comer.